Hey guys, my name is Drew Pizzullo, and welcome to another episode of Watch Out. Um, this episode has been a long time coming. A lot of people have wanted me to do this and do the distinctions between the watch topic that really nobody wants to talk about because of the uh, gray area of it. Um, first off, what we're talking about today are replicas. Replica watches. That's right. And the three classes of replicas that are on the market. Yes, you can buy three different classes of replica watches on the market. I am not going to tell you where to buy them. I don't even know where to buy them because these type of sites that you buy them on are pop-up sites. They're up, they're here one day, and gone the next. Is it counterfeit, fake, replica? Yes. We're not going to go into that Fifty Shades debate on why it's good or bad to own a replica. People have their reasons for them. You may agree with them. You may not agree with it. Legally, morally, this is not what that episode's about. I'm just basically telling you, if you have a replica, there are three different categories it could be in. And what to look for to know how good or bad your replica is. So... With all that being said, the first class of a replica of any watch would be Class A. This is the most common type of replica you are going to find. And the things that you're looking for, first of all, any Class A replica of any watch, and you can name the brand, whatever, Cartier, Omega, Rolex, etc. You are going to find that all Class A replicas that are on the street or online, wherever you, you pick it up, is going to have a quartz movement. Okay? That's the number one thing Class A always has, is a quartz movement. Guys and girls, you got to understand that replicas, there has to be money to be made for the person who's making them replica. So the cheapest way to make money is to use a quartz movement from China that costs 10 cents to a dollar to put in the watch to run it. They're not going to waste time with mechanical or automatic movements. That will definitely distinguish that it is not grade 2 or grade 3. It is your standard grade 1. Where would you find these types of things? You would find them in Chinatown or you'd find them at garage sales, you would find all these types of watches, even online, and the online ones would go anywhere between, you know, $39 that you see, even on ads on Facebook, believe it or not, uh, all the way up to, you could have a quartz replica for um, $99 to $119. There are different, you know, how much they want to put into the watch based on how they're replicating it, but it's always going to have a quartz movement in Class A due to expense. The second thing that you're going to realize about Class A watches is the actual bands themselves. Anything in a Class A watch, okay, and not that they couldn't have them in Double A or Triple A, is going to have a leather strap. Leather or material and this i'm talking about and this may not even be real leather it could be pleather it could be any type of fake band that you're going to put on the watch again you have to keep expenses down so you're going to use material when you're making these knockoffs you're going to be using you know either cheap leather or even they can even use stuff like um Sometimes you'll get, I mean, you will have instances where you will have stainless steel bands, but you're, they say they're stainless steel, but they're not. As soon as they go in the water, they start corroding. So it says stainless steel on the outside. It doesn't mean anything. It's steel that corrodes or cheap aluminum. So you're going to have either a leather strap or we'll put over here uh, aluminum, aluminum band because 
that's basically what you're looking for. You're looking for basic materials that these things are made of. Any type of cheap materials. Okay, and where are these grade A replica watches going to be made? Obviously, you guessed it, it's going to be China. Okay, that's the cheapest place to make a replica watch. That's where all the factories are. That's where the cheap labor is, and that's where the mass quantities can be ordered for these types of watches so they can be brought to the U.S. and other countries and sold at relatively cheap prices. Also in Class A, you're going to look for, we're just going to call this names. And what I mean by names is misspelled names. This is where you have the cheapest of the cheap. Instead of Rolex, you will have Romex, or you will have Cartier, or you will have um, Omega. They will miss purposely. They will mistype the name on the watch for legal issues. So they could say, hey, he didn't buy a, a Rolex. He bought a Romex. That's a different brand. Okay, so you always have to watch the names and the fact that most will, in some certain uh, circumstances, not even say the right name. So these are the cheapest of the cheap that you're looking for. None of them practically are going to have any loom. Um, they're not going to be, okay, we're going to put NWR, which means not water resistant. No way in hell are Class A's going to be water resistant to anything because they don't have seals. Seals cost money. They are just going to have the plain basics. Even if you do get it uh, spelled right, they're just looking for something that is going to give you the resemblance of the real brand whom you are trying to copy. Okay? You're also going to have... Uh, in terms of sizing wise, let's say you do get an aluminum band and you have a, a you want to size the watch. Some watches won't be able to be resized because the mechanisms on the band links are so poor they'll break. Watch for that or the ones that can be resized are going to have your regular pins. okay They're not going to have screws. They're not going to be complex. They are just going to be pin screw links, where you just hammer it down with your typical watch tool, and you hammer these things that look like um, a bobby pin when they come out. Okay, And they will most likely be rusted, because, again, they're not using stainless steel. They're using regular aluminum or anything that can rust. And over time, as these things start corroding due to weather, you're going to find a lot of these things on this watch happening. But again, you get what you pay for. Let's say we're going to move off level A and let's go to double A. Okay, we're now going into the minors into the next leg. Double A is an interesting little category because double A is what I feel most watches fall into. It's really not single A, because most people won't waste their time or money on single A watches when they want a watch to resemble the real thing. It's more of a double A watch, okay? And these, that means costs do increase, okay? So you're looking at something anywhere between 130 up all the way up to four hundred dollars okay for a replica of a double a watch again rolex omega you name the brand they have them all they make all the replicas now um of course i had nothing to do with this i just know over time through experience on how this whole works because i own you know a replica here and there of each class and i can tell you exactly what is going on between them so when you look into double a watches for replicas you're looking for certain things and the first thing you're going to get let's start with the movement like i started with above here you're going to have most likely okay an automatic and i'll just say auto uh an automatic movement okay which means for people who aren't familiar with it 
Okay, it's like this watch I currently have on. As I'm uh, shaking my wrist and turning my wrist, it is winding the mainspring, which is giving power to the watch, so you never need a battery. Okay, this costs a lot more to make, but these automatic movements in AA are going to be from Asia. Okay, so they're going to be Asian automatic movements. Chinese, Japanese, you name it. Uh, anywhere in Singapore, you make it Hong Kong, you make a variety of places, okay, that, that you can get um, Asian automatic movement. Now, they'll run. I didn't say how accurate. Some are better than others. It's a crapshoot. Some will run between um, 5 and 10 seconds a day if you're lucky. Others will run between, most will run between, you know, 20 and 30 seconds a day. Uh, and that's pretty decent for, you know, these Asian automatic watches. You can get them in a lot of pop-up brands. You can get them in a lot of micro brands. But they're just going to take that movement, which is more expensive, but not as expensive as it could be, and throw it into the AA category into these watches to present a better representation of what the real watch would do and what the real watch looks like. Okay, so you have Asian automatic movements. Let's talk about the materials that go into a lot of these AA watches. Well, you're mostly going to get, okay, you're going to get steel. Okay, and it's going to be stainless steel for the most part in level two watches. You're not going to get gold. Um, you're not going to get, okay. You're going to get, I'm no diamond expert, but you're going to get um, CZs in this category as well. Okay, you're going to get the cubic zirconies. Okay, that again, gives it a different feel, gives it a whole different look but they're just realized they're not real or they're lab made so they are real but they're not from the ground they're made in a lab and they're cheaper but they give a much better impression and they do cost more money but it's a step up so you're going to either get a steel band or a cubic zirconia now some of these watches okay in terms of the watch bands you're going to have a mix okay so you're either going to have pins which still can exist, or you're going to have screws. So you have two different options here. You have pins or screws. Screws are always better, unless you lose them, which sucks, but screws are better, they're, they're more durable, and the higher-end watches will have screws for the watch pants to make it easier to adjust. Okay, so... If we take a look at luminescence, yes, they will glow in the dark at this point. They're going to use real luminescence in the watches because you're paying more. They're going to put more into it for you. Um, in terms of water resistance, even some of these watches typically can go up to 5 ATM. Okay. There we go. That's pretty bad. But that'll work. All right. So you got... It, I'd say still most are going to run around the 3 ATM wise, which means you can take them in the shower, if that. Um, but you may even have ones like the dive watches that you typically will get as a replica, and they go up to 5 ATM, which means you can take them in the pool. I wouldn't go snorkeling or scuba diving with them, but you can take them in the shower, take them in the pool. The ones that are well made, because they will have rubber seals that will keep out the water. Again. It's not like it, take, it costs a billion dollars to make a watch good. They're just going to give you certain things so they can keep their profit at a certain level in terms of how much you're actually paying. We talk about the actual movements themselves. Here's where you have a little bit of fun. It's still going to be Asian, but most likely a Japanese movement. Okay? Um, it's Japanese automatic, they're better, more reliable, it's where the Miyota movements come into town, um, sometimes you'll even get uh, a low end, very rarely, but a very low end Swiss movement, I dare say that. Uh, here you can also have, okay, German movements, which are very good as well. 
So your movements are coming from either Jap Japan or Germany. You're going to have a lot of different interesting type of movements here. Here you can have different things. You can have chronographs. You can have moon phases. That'll work well. You could have uh, timers that are going to work well. You could have a lot of different features. Here's where the features come in that work. Or in class A, they don't work. If, even if they're on the actual dial, the, the multi-function pushers aren't doing anything. Here they're going to do something and they're actually going to tell time. And they have, actually have a function and they're going to perform that function because, again, you're a lot cheaper here, mostly under 100. Here you're from 1 to 400. So you can see the difference that you're now getting when you go to level 2. They will. There's not going to be any misspelled names. There's not going to be any stupid errors like that. When you go to the back of the watch, they even have exhibition case backs that will look exactly like the real thing. So you can see the movement, but you won't see a Swiss movement. You'll see more of a Japanese or a German movement inside the watch. Most of are unmarked in these watches anyway. Okay, so that is what you're going to basically see in level 2. Double A, triple A, the last of the last, okay? This is where you can label it as the best of the best. Triple A movements. First thing you're going to notice about these suckers. Well, they're either going to be automatic movements or they're going to be mechanical. Okay? Most triple A movements are mechanical. Not that you can't have them in double A. You can. It does happen but they usually don't waste their time on uh, mechanical movements because mechanical movements usually are a little bit more pricey because they're not in as demand these days. Okay, so what I have here is a AAA uh, watch. And now the, the price range in these go anywhere between, you can get some in the low 300s, but mostly they are anywhere between 300 to 1,000. Okay, and this is an example of a JLC or Gigi Le Colt, okay? This is a Reverso, and this is a mechanical Reverso. And as you can see from the actual quality, looks exactly like the real thing. It is as heavy as the real thing. And as you can see from this one, this has, there we go. This one um, is a dual face, and you wind the watch with mechanicals, you wind it up, more than uh, automatics, you don't wind by hand like this. Typically, you would do this with a mechanical to get. And this one, you go both ways to get both sides of the watch working. So this is your duo reverso, which is very, very hard to make because you have two movements in one watch. So again, you're going to have a multi-movement in these watches. Okay, excuse my spelling, it sucks. Okay. So you're going to have a multi-movement in a lot of these watches that you can't have in a double-A because it just, it, it's not cost-efficient for them to do it, okay? Here, the movements in terms of material, okay, the movements are going to be steel, which, again, standard, but now you also can have gold, and you're going to have diamonds. So you're going to have a lot of different things that it can be made out of. You have the real diamonds. Now I didn't say they're going to be the highest quality diamonds that you get in an engagement ring, but they'll be low end. Okay, they're going to be acceptable. Okay, whatever G clarity, I don't ask me. I'm not a diamond expert. But you will get low end diamonds here. You're going to get even in the highest end ones, you will get gold. Okay, a lot of 10k use a lot of 10 karat gold for these types of replicas, sometimes 14, sometimes 18, depending on the replica. But most of them are steel. Okay, these, like AA, are going to have, the pins are going to be screws, uh, or they're going to have the complicated movements screwed in, or you're going to have a complicated movement, like Breitling, which has a multi-piece watch. Okay, so you're going to have multi We'll have multi 
uh, functional links, which has screws in them and then also has springs. Uh, you're going to have a lot of different things in this watch because, again, you're paying more, you're getting more. Okay, ATM for water resistance. These suckers can, believe it or not, they'll go, most of that I've seen, uh, can go up to 20 ATM. Okay, they're really going to give you a diver's watch with some of these pieces. You know, most are in the 10 range, but the real good ones, just like a diver's watch. Same thing, guys. Um, and in terms of movements, okay, they are going to come most likely from Switzerland. Yay, we finally get to the Swiss. Hey, congratulations. Um, we finally get there. And some of these suckers can even have the, uh, the famed movement like Valjou, but most will use the standard movements from the Swiss industry, the ETA movements. Um, so they'll use sometimes a house movement, but they will be from Switzerland, uh, most likely. Not that you couldn't have German or Japanese in Category 3 as well, but the best ones will have the Swiss movements, and they will say it uh, most likely on the website that you buy it from. It comes with a Swiss movement, uh, which means that is the best that they are going to offer. Um, so basically, this is the difference between A double-A and triple-A. Do you want to spend $100? Do you want to spend $200? Do you want to spend $1,000? It's up to you in the end. I'm not advocating one way or another. I just want to make you more informed. If you have a replica, look for these things in any of these classes. And as always, like, subscribe, give me your thoughts, opinions on uh, any future episodes you want me to do. Um, later on in the year, we do have the N... NYC watch time show that we are going to be doing that we do every year along with the wind up watch fair that is following it um, but we will only be broadcasting from NYC watch time later on this year so everybody stay safe stay healthy and I'll see you next time on watch out